This is a quick, quick, quick public service, service announcement to all my white uh, and even Asian people too, because this falls on y'all too as well. Uh, to my white and my Asian counterparts, brethren, um, friends and family out there, listen. Um, if you only like black athletes, black comedians, black anything entertainment based, rappers, so on and so on, so forth. If you only like those black people that are that entertain you, but don't really care for other black people, and you think that you're not racist, you're still a racist. Just because you like Michael Jordan. I had a friend of mine tell me, he was from New York this a long time ago. He told me this. This is when I was in school. He said, man, it would confuse me sometimes when I would be in certain Italian neighborhoods. Like he used to mess with some Italian chicks. And I would be in Italian neighborhoods and they would try to run us out there, neighborhoods, whatever, right? And they would be, this was back when Michael Jordan was at his height in the 90s. Michael Jordan was like, you know, Kobe hadn't even gotten the league yet. Um, he, he said it's like 93. Kobe was in high school still. So Michael was like, ugh. Michael was like, this is 93, 94 Michael. Like the height of Michael Jordanism. You know what I'm saying? And he said they used to run me, run me and my friends that would come mess with these, mess with these Italian chicks. You know, because mostly, most sometimes Italian men too like black, uh, like to sleep with black women and men, but they don't like you know what I'm saying. But don't like us, which is weird. But he said they would run him and his friend out of the Italian neighborhood, and they would be having on you know the Jordan T-shirts, the Jordan shoes, the Jordan jogging suits with the jump man on the back of it. And he was like, wait a minute, you're wearing, you know, this is back when Michael Jordan had those t-shirts with uh, Spike Lee called, do you know? Because I had one of them. He'd be like, do you know, do you know one? And he'd be Michael Jordan's face. He said they would be rocking Jordan t-shirts with Michael Jordan dunking and everything and be calling us the N-word, chasing us out their neighborhood. And he, he said, how you don't like black people, but you wearing, you know, uh, you literally are wearing, you're dressed from head to toe in a black man. <laughs> he said they would have on, they'd be dressed like black, they said they'd be cold part about it, they'd be dressed like black dudes. He said you're literally dressed from head to toe, you got a, you, you got a Michael Jordan um, hat, you got a Michael Jordan um, shirt, well, you know, you got a Jumpman hat, Air, you know, a Jumpman hat. You got a Jumpman Air, Nike Air Jordan jogging suit. You're wearing the, the latest Jordans that he just came out with this this year. And you got on a Jordan t-shirt with his face on it, dunking a basketball. But you calling me a get out of your, get out, get out of my neighborhood, you N-word. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, oh, he said that messed him up. But coming out here to L.A., I I realize that's the case too. Being in Hollywood, they don't like black people. As far as like trying to be behind the scenes, you're trying to be like on the on the grip crew or the camera assistant crew. They don't want to be. They don't want you taking their jobs in the industry in Hollywood. But yet, Eddie Murphy's their favorite actor. Or Denzel's their favorite actor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like. You don't want no black people to work with you, but you like Denzel movies, you know, and that's what, you know, but they'll be like, oh, I'm not racist, but you don't want no black people. You won't never, you won't never hire no black people to work at your company, you know, but you know, you got to post a Denzel in your office or, uh, um, or, uh, who, uh, or, or chat with Bozeman as Black Panther on your, in your office because Black Panther is one of your favorite movies. That's what it, it, Chad, 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 Chad with Bozeman, one of your favorite actors. But it, it, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying it's it's weird how they can do that and feel like, oh, I'm, I'm not racist. Yes, you are, but you just like famous. Let me tell you, another, and I've told this story before. I had um, a woman. I had a woman one time call me. This is when uh, Michael Jackson was still alive. I was working for TMZ. And these 
women, it was a group of them, not just women and men, they were literally caring about Michael Jordan's, not Michael, you keep saying Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson's house. This is when Michael Jackson was still, I said Michael Jordan. Michael Jackson was still living. Michael Jordan's still with us, y'all. Michael Jordan's still with us. You know what I'm saying? Um, but this is when Michael Jackson was still alive. And um, I remember, I remember I was, TMZ sent me to go shoot Michael Jackson, take pictures, not actually, not actually kill him, but take pictures of him. They sent me, TMZ sent me to go get video of Michael Jackson at his house. He had, he has rented a house in LA and these people used to camp out front of his, um, oh, this is cool. These people used to camp out front of Michael Jackson's house, this, this, you know, these women, and, and they were white women. And so TMZ be knowing everything. So they sent us because they knew Michael Michael Jackson was going to, he used to like antiques. Preferably, he used to like a place that was on La Brea. It was a place, it, that place is still there. It's an antique place. And they would have like weird antique stuff, memorabilia. And Michael Jackson used to like that spot. So I think maybe the antique place would tip TMZ. Now that I think about it, I believe they would tip TMZ off that Michael Jackson was coming because if they if we got videos and photos of him leaving this antique shop I think they would call paparazzi and TMZ and see that would be the story um, Michael Jackson at so and so antique shop on La Brea and they know they, they name is going to be all over the papers and everything because we got Michael Jackson leaving or coming to this particular store so I'm, now that I think about it I think that antique shop would tip TMZ off. But nevertheless, we go there. Michael Jackson goes inside. Security blocking the doors, but they have he has to go through the front to go up to his car. Because by the time we got there, his crazed fans, was all, you know, they were already there, and the black SUV that Michael Jackson would travel in was there. It would be parked in the front, and there's only one way in and one way in, one way out of this place. Michael Jackson usually would go through the back, but this particular place, he had to go through the front. So these white girls stand out front, and they all, you know, waiting for Michael to come out. And all that they would want is just to get a hug from Michael. They would just follow him around all day just to get hugs from Michael all day. Camp out front of his house, wait for him. Sometimes Michael wouldn't even leave the house, and they would be camped out front of his house that he was renting, wait for him to make a move. Go to a doctor's appointment, go to, go to the antique store, go shopping. But sometimes Michael wouldn't leave, leave his house for days. You know, he had a studio inside his the house he was renting, so he could people would go there to record music with him and stuff like Will I Am. He, you know, they would pull in, and you know the security would you know let the car in. They would block the you know block you know, his gate was covered with black stuff, so you couldn't see inside. You know, inside the yard or whatever. But that's what these women. So they would camp out all day waiting to get a glimpse, a hug, a you know a hello from Michael, all day, all night. Anyway, so. Michael getting ready to leave this and and, and this uh, antique store. Me and a couple other paparazzi from other news outlets are there. Michael comes out, gets in his car. They scream and crying, whatever. He touches one of the girls, whatever. They Michael's truck take off, so we run and get back to our cars to to follow Michael. Maybe he may make a make another stop. You know, Michael was, Michael's hot, man. This is when Michael, before he passed away, he was getting ready to do, he had just made his announcement. He was getting ready to do his tour that he didn't unfortunately make because he passed away. But he made the announcement that he was preparing for his tour. That's why he was in town. The company that he was with, AEG, they bring, they had rented that house for him, mansion for him, for him and his family, his, him and his kids. So the SUV takes off. We get in our car. We, we we run after our cars, me and some other guys that I was with. The girl, the white girl that would always follow Michael around, she had a tattoo of Michael Jackson. Not the white Michael, but the old Michael beat it. Really detailed on her arm. I asked, I said, oh, that's a nice tattoo. She ignored me one time. She ignored me when I said, oh, that's a nice tattoo. She said, whatever. I said, oh, okay, it's like that. 
she probably thought, oh, you the paparazzi. You 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 the one who hurt who Michael doesn't like. Michael because Michael didn't like the paparazzi. Michael doesn't like you, so I don't like you either. I thought it was that type of deal. Cool. And as we running back to our car, Michael takes off. I bumped into her. Guess what this white girl says to me? With a black man tattooed on her arm. Guess what she tells me? Watch where you going, you fucking nigger. <laughs> black man on her arm, running after a black man, tells me who bumped into her, watch where you going, you effing N-word. I ain't gonna say it again. But I had to say it so y'all can feel how I felt when she said it. It stung. I'm like, what? And I said, you, I didn't know what to say. Like, Wait, are you running? I, you have a black man tattooed on your arm. You're running after a black man's SUV crying and screaming. I, that boggled my... Even the guy next to me, and my, shout out to my homeboy, Angelo. He's from Argentina. He's like, dude, did she just call you... Did I hear her say what she, I just... Th this is what he said. Did she say what I just think she said, bro? That's what he said. He said, did she say what I think she... I said, yeah. I said, you ugly bitch like that. But I paused. She was already getting her car gone. She was gone. Chasing after black... I said, wow. I said, so no, it's not. This. So when I asked her about her tattoo being nice, it's not like she, it didn't have nothing about me being a paparazzi. It had something about me being a black man. That's why she didn't say thank you or nothing. She didn't like black. I said, but wait a minute. She has a black man on her arm. And like, like I said, the tattoo she had wasn't even the new and improved white Michael before he passed away. It was the old beaded. It was a real detail. He had the beaded jacket. He was black then when he had to be doing his beaded hair. He was still black. But I'm just saying, he looked black. She had So he had to use a black... He has to use brown ink to color that in. It was a very detailed black Michael on her arm. And I'm like, she just called me the N-word, but you're chasing after a black... <laughs> it bought, I said, wow. I said, so these white people who can who try to ease their conscience to think that they don't like black people, no, you only like the famous ones because they entertain you. If Michael Jackson was the cook at El Pollo Loco or the manager of El Pollo Loco and didn't make it to stardom or to the height that he did, he would he would be another N word to you to that woman too that was chasing after him. But being that he's Mike, he's Michael Jackson, the world greatest entertainer of all time, which he was. Which he was. We're not taking that away from him. You know what I'm saying? He's different than the rest of you guys. He's not like the, the average Negro. A lot of times, that's why they kind of are drawn to a lot of these famous black celebrities. Because they feel as though... They feel as though, in our head, we've been told black people are, are downtrodden. They can't... You know, they're evil... They they sleep with everything. They can't control their penises. They're predatorial. They all of them rob and steal. They all smoke weed and on drugs. They all sell dope. They all have they they all have the hive. You know what I'm saying? But then this one that oh no this one he's special because he don't do like the rest of them do. Like all of them are are prone to do. He's special. So now I like this black guy. Or this black woman, cause they 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 don't do those things. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. So I own it's just weird to me that how they compartmentalize. So just you know, racism where they love, uh, they love Cat Williams. Cat Williams, their favorite comedian. But a black woman cut him off in traffic. She all kind of n-word bitches, and you know what I'm saying? It, it's weird. It, so it's. You know, so it's just a little per service announcement. Just because you like a particular white, a black entertainer, and but you still hate black people, you still a racist. That's all I got to say. What y'all think about that? Let me know in the comments. What y'all think?